Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Hot Topics in Texas Digital Higher Education. The topic for our webinar today is supporting equitable access to career and technical education through open educational resources. I'm Judith Sebesta, Executive Director of the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas. Just a few words about us. We were founded in 1998 as the Virtual College of Texas, and we rebranded in 2019 as Digitex. Our primary mission is to serve the 50 public Texas community college districts and to assist them in providing learners an education without barriers. Our initiatives include supporting course sharing at Texas Community Colleges via our partnership with the company Acadium, leading the Texas Quality Matters Consortium, supporting open educational resources, which is obviously most pertinent to our topic today. And we also provide membership in the state authorization network of WCET for our member colleges. And we conduct research on digital education broadly conceived. This webinar will be recorded, archived, and available on the Digitex YouTube channel, and we'll be sending out a link to this recording to everyone who registered today. Also, uh, towards the end of the webinar, our program coordinator, Heather Walker, will put a link to our very brief webinar evaluation form. If you take just a few moments to provide an evaluation of the webinar, we would very much appreciate that. And I'd also like to thank Courtney Shaw from CaptionSync for providing our live closed captioning today. And then also final, final bit of housekeeping. If, any, if you have any questions, if you would please feel free to put them in the chat. And we hope to have around 10 minutes at the end of the presentations to respond to those questions. If by chance we can't get to every question, then we can get back to you after the webinar. I am so pleased today to have our two presenters, Dr. Esperanza Zenon and Tarek Morris. And I'll provide a brief introduction of both right now, and then I'll give an overview of our agenda, and then we will get to it. Dr. Zenon is an Associate Professor of Physical Science at River Parishes Community College in Louisiana. She serves as the primary investigator on an NSF ATE grant project aimed at improving RPCC's instrumentation program. She's very passionate about STEM equity and has served on the executive membership and strategic planning committees for the National Alliance for Partnerships in Equity. She's also involved in several organizations that work to make education more affordable for students through the utilization of OER to include the Regional Leaders for Open Education, CCC OER, and Merlot. Tarek Morris is in his fourth year as an instructor in the Machine Tool Technology Department at Lynn Benton Community College in Oregon. Teaching is his fourth or maybe fifth, he'd have to tell us, career after time spent as a machinist, a welder, a GIS analyst studying migratory land birds, and a first career in software development. To lower cost and improve st uh, student outcomes, Tarek maximizes the use of free and open educational resources by utilizing OERs made available online and by creating his own video tutorials for most of his classes. And obviously we're gonna hear more about their work to support CTE, OER, and equity in just a few moments. So our agenda today is I'm gonna give just some very brief background and context, including definitions of CTE and OER, although I imagine many of you are familiar with both of these already. Then Esperanza is going to provide an overview of OER repositories that include resources for CTE. And then she'll continue to talk about CTE and OER at River Parish's, Parish's Community College. And then we'll turn to Tarek, who'll talk about CTE and OER in his work at Lynn Benton Community College. And then hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So just very quickly, a broad definition of career and technical education from Wikipedia and open source itself is that ed it's education that prepares people to work as a technician or to take up employment in a skilled craft or trade as a tradesperson or artisan. CET, CTE, depending on the context, is sometimes referred to as vocational, that's often in the K through 12 environment, or workforce education. 
And I would point you to resources that the Association for Career and Technical Education provides. They have some really nice infographics and other information that dig into CTE in more detail. But you know, I like the two that I've included here in my slides, these two infographics, it really just shows the, the extent of career and technical education. 92% of high school students are part of CTE, plus millions of post-secondary students. They fulfill employer needs that are very much high skill, high wage, and high demand. And they include high schools, career centers, community and technical colleges, four-year institutions, and more. And here, I won't go through all of this, but here you can see 16 career clusters that are included within the general term of CTE, a wide range of disciplines, fields, and sectors. And I would note here that they point out that CTE integrates with academics in a very rigorous and relevant curriculum. And they prepare students to be college and career ready by providing core academic skills, employability skills, and technical job specific skills. Then my final bit of just contextual information here is to share with you the Texas definition of OER. You probably have one for your own specific context, but the Texas Education Code describes OER as teaching, learning, or research resources that are in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use, adaptation, and redistribution by any person. And then it goes on to point out that they're not just textbooks, but can include a wide range of materials. And I think you're gonna hear about that today from both Esperanza and Tarek. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop my share and I'm gonna turn it over to Esperanza and give her a moment to share her slides. Thank you, Judith. You're welcome. Uh, give me just a moment, I'll get my screen shared. So if you'll kindly let me know if you're seeing this at all. Esperanza, that looks just fine to me. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll delve into these three areas. Uh, I'll focus first on some of the open resources that, I, that I've developed to support some of the technical programs at RPCC. Then I'll look at some of the OER that I've, I've used in my own classes and to support some of the STEM classes. And you'll, you'll see that uh, there is quite a bit of overlap in terms of the resources that um, both the tech and STEM areas are using when I get to my last uh, bullet or uh, area OER in action. So what I've done to, to be supportive you know, in sharing is that um, all of the resources that I have listed here are linkable. So if at any point you would like to have a copy of this presentation uh, and, and link out to those resources, uh, I, I can definitely make that available to you. Um, so this first source is uh, engineering technology. Uh, it, you can see right on the screen is open courseware and resources. And I utilized a, a good number of these resources when I uh, helped to develop uh, some of the process technology uh, uh, courses. So I, I'm sure you noticed in the introduction that I am actually a physics and physical science instructor at River Parishes. And so it might seem uh, odd to some of you that I'm helping to develop open content and open courses for a technical faculty. Well, we have a unique situation at our college in that we do not have um, you know, classically trained instructional designers. And so there's a cadre of faculty at River Parishes that have uh, you know, taken on the additional task of serving as instructional designers. And our first real deep dive into um, you know, work as instructional designers came as a result of COVID. So I'm sure that um, like you know, at many of your institutions, you know that during COVID, we are forced to move a great number of things online, right? And 
if you're working in a technical field, you know that a good bit of that work is actually hands-on. And it uh, doesn't um, naturally lend itself to a, a totally online platform. But what we were able to do, those of us who, serving in the role of instructional designer, was to work very closely with those technical faculty to find content that could be moved into an online format. And then we took it a step further with some grant support to um, develop and enhance that online um, you know, block of instruction or, or portion of learning um, with open content. And so this was one of the first sources that I, I came up across uh, in, in the process of curating those, those open resources. Uh, Wisconsin Technical College has uh, an amazing library of open resources that I've used to, uh, to support uh, quite a bit of, uh, quite a few technical courses, uh, welding, instrumentation, process technology, um, even some of the allied health because while it says technical, um, there are some what I would consider classic STEM type uh, activities available through Wisconsin Technical. So, you know, those uh, students in nursing, they need to be versed in some chemistry, some biology, some, some physics, some mathematics. And uh, I was able to utilize resources from, from Wisconsin Technical to, to build learning content to support them. Uh, industrial automation. Uh, you can see on the screen, hopefully it, um, the, the, the view is, is fairly decent there. You can see the, that there is a wide range of areas that uh, are being represented to support industrial automation. So you can see things like uh, um, pneumatics and then what is torque, which is typically a physics topic, right? Uh, when you, when in, in most cases, um, and of course, yeah, it is very relevant in, in the technical fields, but um, you know, in terms of just plain theory, most of the time that's tackled in a physics course. So you can see that uh, that is a very, very helpful resource for finding open content to support the technical areas. Uh, 180 skills. Now, um, I, I, should, I should preface this by saying uh, 180 skills actually provides content um, to support just about every technical area you can think of in terms of safety and, and, and so on and so forth. And what our, what our system office did was purchase a system-wide license for unlimited use by our students. And so I guess, you know, it's not, it, it doesn't come with a, what you call a typical Creative Commons license, but to our students, it is a resource that we use widely because it, it's at no cost to them, right? And so the whole goal is to make things affordable. And, and that's one way we've tackled that. And I utilize this source to build um, content for um, what it, industrial maintenance, if I recall correctly, looking at things like safety um, um, and, and also for um, HVAC. I mean, these are areas that are way out of my norm right? Because I'm on the academic side of the house. And, and, and maybe at your institution, a lot of times the academic side of the house and the technical side of the house, they aren't necessarily married together in that way, working together that closely. But we forged that type of partnership so that we could be supportive of their needs. Uh, Skills Commons, and I, I believe that uh, Tariq might talk about this a little bit um, in, in his a portion of the in a portion of his presentation, but I've also um, um, utilized a great number of resources that I found in Skills Commons um, to support many of our technical um, uh, courses. Here's a resource that I've used to help build content for drafting: the Hitchhiker's Guide, uh, AutoCAD, um, in, in particular. Um, 
And so that that's a, a resource that's uh, open. And you can see from the screen some of the, the resources. There are videos, uh, forums that students can engage in, um, a lot of nice content that uh, I've uh, customized to support uh, drafting and AutoCAD. And then uh, we've, we've taken it even a step further. I know we, we said OER as the primary focus here, but we've actually started to engage in what we call OEP, Open Education Pedagogy, where you actually engage the students um, as creators of content. And, and I'll be honest, that's the next real front, uh, frontier for me uh, in my own courses. And, and I'm av uh, actively trying to engage other faculty to see the benefit of OEP. Um, and, and let me just say, you know, when it comes to that whole equity piece, OEP has some real value because it's there when you engage students as creators of content that you begin to hear their voices and give the, um, you know, and, 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 you know, their own perspective comes into the, the content that they create, right? So if you want to have a way to engage your students and, and you know, allow them to express their experiences and their culture um, and, and their voice, then OEP is definitely it. And so these drawings that you see here um, are, are work that students have done. And in that, that work lives in the course from the time they create it going forward. And so you can have students to take that work and, and you know, upgrade it, modify it, make changes. Um, and then they can also create their own content to add to that you know, repository. So that, that's one way we've uh, you know, started that whole process in, in the technical courses. And it does have, it, uh, it has real meaning when you talk about equity. So um, I'll, I'll go through some of the um, resources that I've pulled from in my own courses. And then you will see that when I get to showing you some of the examples of content that I've built to support, um, to support uh, tech and STEM courses, you'll see that there's a real lot, uh, uh, a lot of overlap there, okay? So um, the Open Education Network is actually called now, uh, at the time they were referred to as um, OTN, Open Textbook Network, and that was primarily uh, their, their avenue of providing open content in the form of textbooks. And the nice thing is that those textbook ha textbooks have reviewed, I've actually reviewed textbooks for them. Um, they've since changed their name to Open Education Network, but you see the website there listed, you can access it that way as well. Um, the, the, one of the values that I found is that, you know, they have a wide variety of subjects available and um, there are peer reviews on those textbooks. Merlot, this is probably one of the oldest sources. Um, and, and there's a, like a tremendous number of resources through Merlot. Um, Merlot also has a peer review system. And in fact, I serve as a reviewer on the teacher education board. Um, Merlot, they're also the, uh, in many, they're, they're also the kind of organization that's kind of behind um, Skills Commons too. Jerry Hanley has his hand in, in both pots, so to speak, in terms of development. Um, and, and so this is, you know, you basically go out to the site and, and search for what you're looking for and it'll spit back uh, areas that, you know, materials that relate to what you've searched for and you can filter it to, to only bring back those items that um, it, are, are there under Creative Commons. Now, what you should understand about Merlot is that it's a referatory. It's not actually a repository. So it's pointing you out to the actual resources. Um, but, you know, I found a great number of resources uh, um, through utilizing Merlot. BC Campus um, has an, a really uh, large number of textbooks and, and, and a lot of academic subjects. And also 
the first time I ever used BC Campus was to support technical courses. They have an exceptional number of textbooks that are strictly geared toward workforce. And I utilize the one that relates to um, um, uh, electrical uh, training to build content for um, those electrical programs that were in the process of moving content online. So yeah, you'll, you'll find a great number of things there that are beneficial. Um, I found things on safety. Uh, I found things that deal with, um, that I was utilizing to support industrial maintenance, all kinds of great resources that are available through BC Campus. On, on the screen that you're seeing, you don't see the full listing on the left menu, but if you go all the way down, there's one that says workforce. And I think there are four major areas that uh, you can utilize to, in, you know, in terms of strictly just being workforce related. Uh, then OpenStax, you know, they're kind of like the, um, you know, one of the more widely used source, uh, resources in terms of uh, textbooks. Uh, I use the OpenStax University Physics and College Physics to support the fluid mechanics course that I teach for the technical programs. So I actually teach a fluid mechanics class for process technology. And I utilize the OpenStax textbooks to support that class. Instead of the actual fluid mechanics textbook that cost the students upwards of 200 and something dollars. I just took the portions of the, the relevant content from the OpenStax uh, textbook and then sub, uh, sub, you know, um, added some additional open content to, to the course to, to help them not to have to buy that textbook. FET is one of those non-textbook uh, sources. Uh, they provide simulations and I utilize their simulations to support my online labs. I, act, I actually teach all online courses and I utilize these simulators to support my online labs, but I also use them as a means of uh, offering practice to my students um, in, in lecture courses. Uh, the nice thing about the FET simulations is that they're HTML, many of them are HTML5, so they don't have to have any special software to run them. The other great thing is that for many of them, there's already pre-built learning content that utilizes those simulators. And you can take those learning activities and customize them because they come with an open license. This next source, uh, Walter Fent, is one that I've used since I started teaching. Uh, I tell everybody I was doing open before I knew what open was. And this was one of the first sources that I went to, to, um, to for open content. And I use this to support, uh, I've used this to support technical courses as well as my own. Um, now, the thing about Walter Fent is that you have to build the content that you want around the simulators that are provided. But they're, they're HTML5 and so, uh, you know, the issue for many simulations was that once flash players stopped working, you weren't really able to use your simulators anymore. But uh, a great many of these have been converted to HTML5 format. And so uh, there's no loss there. OER Commons. Uh, OER Commons is a source where you can find content on just about anything. And there are hubs that you can uh, participate in. I pull content on, um, on vectors from here, for example, to support my, my own courses. And I pull content on uh, things like pressure and, and gravity and all of those kinds of topics that um, my technical students also needed to, to be aware of. And then I'll just briefly mention this one because I know Tariq is gonna talk about this uh, in more detail. Uh, CK12 offers a, a great uh, collection of what they call flex books. And I use their people's physics as my primary text in uh, my physical science courses because of the level 
um, of the of the content presented. Um, uh, OpenStax has great textbooks that are are useful in in like uh, physics and and courses that are a little bit more mathematical. But when you want to work on a conceptual side, like I'm doing in the physical science courses, um, then you you might need something that is a little less math heavy. And so I found that to be the case with the CK12 uh, uh, people's physics. And I also use that uh, some of their PLICS activities in my um, labs and fluid mechanics class. Esperanza, this is such great information. Just to let you know, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're gonna need to move on to Tarek in just about five minutes. Okay, yeah. So then what I'll do is I'll skip over that over the, the few remaining items, because I know Tariq is gonna cover some of them and just give you a quick snapshot of some of the content that I've built utilizing some of the resources that I mentioned. Okay, so here are my own classes. You can see that I'm using uh, the CK12 uh, textbook as a primary and I supplement them with some Khan Academy videos. That, that was, those are also some great open resources. Uh, and let me just skip down, you see here, um, I built some content for our nursing and, nursing and allied health programs. And all of the items that you see listed here under course materials, those are all open resources. And then welding, I mentioned that I built some things for welding. You can see that um, we're utilizing the Libertex and uh, uh, Chemistry Flexbook from CK12 to support a welding course. And then uh, I just recently built this content under the ATE uh, grant that was mentioned, the NSF grant that I'm PI on. Um, so this is for the, an instrumentation course. And so you can see all about Circus Textbook, which is an open resource. Um, and then um, you can see I'm using the Wisconsin. Uh, when, I, when I screenshotted this, it added the, the links. So I guess that might be helpful. But things like number systems, um, I, I pulled all of that from that Wisconsin online resource that I sh showed you. So um, again, I'm more than willing to share this so you can directly link out to the resources that I've, uh, I'm utilizing. Um, if you know of a resource, don't hesitate to share with me. Uh, there's my contact information and uh, thanks for your attention. I'll be happy to answer questions at the end. So I didn't go didn't, didn't go too far over. No, no, you're just fine. And and I think while Tarek is getting his slides up, I'll just say that I hear with some frequency that there's just not much in the way of CTE OER out there. And I think what you're already showing us, Esperanza, is that's not really the case. And I like Marcy Jackson put in the chat thanking you for the resources and pointed out, I think so brilliantly, that simulations are essential in CTE. And I think you're showing that there are some resources out there for that. Yeah, you, uh, it, I have taken a, quite a bit of time to curate those resources and I'm always willing to share. So anybody, feel free to reach out to me. You, you can have it all, it's all open, so. The beauty of the open community, isn't it, Esperanza? And I, 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 my, I myself have found Esperanza to be so generous in her sharing of her wealth of information about this subject. I up? Um, no, I do not see your slides. Myself. Oh, I was waiting for that. I can oh, yeah, share yeah, your yeah. slides now if you'd like. Go right ahead whenever you're ready, Tarek. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Esperanza. That was amazing. I really wish I could go back in time to four years ago when I started teaching after just seeing your presentation. Um, it was, there's so many resources, open education resources out there. And um, I wanted to start with a little story about how I got into OER um, because it's kind of funny, and, but I think it maybe is similar to a lot of other CTE instructors. Um, when I started teaching, I was working full time the Friday before I started cl teaching classes on Tuesday. And I had been handed my curriculum from the outgoing instructor who was retiring for the classes I was going to teach which amounted to a manila folder full of photocopies um, and a really experienced teacher who is now retired. Um, so I had gone to the publisher of our textbook and I got all the slide presentations from the publisher and I had planned, I was, those were going to be my lecture materials to get going 
Um, well, the second week of class, I was lecturing and I started to get really funny looks on my students' faces. And so I stopped and I asked, what's going on? And they said, oh, Ryan used these exact slides this morning in our manufacturing process is one class. So I realized at that point, unless I wanted this to be a recurring theme throughout this year, I needed to get some other resources to teach because we couldn't be duplicating each other's slides. Um, so I, I, if you've ever watched the old show MASH, they talk about meatball surgery. It was kind of like meatball curriculum development. Suddenly I needed to find resources for next week to teach my classes. Um, so that's how I got into OER. I 100% I, I believe in OER. The equity aspects of it are really important. But for me, I got into it as a matter of survival. Um, and I wanted to start out um, with this quote, if you see in my slides, that I pulled from the OER Commons website. And in, in OEP, they're talking about open practice um, rather than pedagogy. Um, but anyway, OEP leverages open education and resources to expand the role of educators, allowing teachers to become curators, curriculum designers, and content creators. In sharing teaching tools and strategies, educators network their strengths and improve the quality of education for their students. With an open practice, educators are able to adjust their content pedagogies and approach based on their learners without limitations of all rights reserved. I find that statement really inspiring, um, but also really daunting. Because teaching is hard enough. Um, it's enough for me to get my, my students engaged and teach, but to also be a curator, a curriculum designer, and a content creator is too much work, or it's a lot of work. So I'm going to come back to this uh, quote later, um, but I want to move forward for now, um, if I can figure out what I need. There we go. So um, I'm going to first part of my talk, I'm going to talk about some OER resources I've used, and I'll move through the ones that Esperanza already covered so we don't duplicate too much work, um, and show you how I use them. And then I'm going to talk about a tool later that I'm, I'm developing to try and help teachers share their resources um, and curate them. Um, so mostly I've used OER resources for my inspection and manual machining class and for a material science class I took, I, I teach. Um, so let's move through here. Uh, Esperanza talked about CK-12. Um, oh, and as I get started here, I wanna talk about something just a little bit. As Judith said, my background is a little bit in um, software development and stuff like that. I'm gonna talk about the interfaces a, a little bit, and I tend to have a little bit of critique sometimes. I wanna say at the outset, I think these are all amazing tools. I use them, they've improved my classes. Um, but I find some things about the interface of finding the resources frustrating. Um, and so I might talk about those a little bit, but I don't mean to be super critical. I'm just a constant improvement type of person. Um, so I'm gonna flip over and here is CK12. And what you're looking at here is where I, because I'm logged in, you can see the materials that I've developed in CK12. Um, and so I, this is the material science textbook I developed for my material science class. And the process is really easy. You have access to different chemistry texts and you can pull in sections and edit them and modify them and the like. It was really great to quickly develop this material science textbook. One of the problems this, if you look down here, all these resources down here are say they're created by me. I didn't create any of these resources. I pulled them in from other resources and now it looks like I created them. I feel that's maybe a little disingenuous and it can be really confusing. If I search on something like this and I look at community contributed context, I've just searched on IONS, I've got 3,735 hit results for material on IONS in the community contributed and if you look at all the same thumbnails for them, you have a pretty good idea that they're probably all the same thing. And they're all exactly what happened with me, where I borrowed a, a chapter from a book and now it's created a new resource. So as an instructor trying to come in here and find information, maybe somewhere on page 22, somebody modified one of these and created a really great resource, but it's kind of lost in the, um, in the, the volume of all the search results. 
Um, so great resource. I used it. I think it's wonderful, but this I found frustrating when using it. Um, Esperanza talked about Libre. No, she talked about something else. This is Libre Text, which is another awesome resource. Um, it does a little better. I won't talk too much about it of tracking where things come from. Um, one of the nice things about Libre Text is um, there's a human, re I'm sorry, there's a workforce section on it. It's a lot more college level stuff. I really liked Libre Text. I ended up not using it because the interface was a little bit harder to, um, to work my way through. Um, Skills Commons, a ton, a ton, a ton of resources in Skills Commons. Um, the, uh, once again, the problem, if I have a problem with Skills Commons, there's too many resources. It's really, really, really hard to dig through here and find what you need. And I was going to navigate through here. If I search on CNC, I get 27 pages of results. We're only 264. That's not too bad. Um, it's really well organized. Um, I have found a lot of good stuff in here. Um, metallurgy, if I search on. Um, I've had great slide presentations um, that I've pulled from here and used in my classes. Really good way to uh, to find resources for your classes. It's a little bit mixed in here. Sometimes you, you click on a resource and it's just an outline. Sometimes it's a bunch of slides. So it takes a while to chew through here and find what's really going to um, work for your classes, but there's a ton of really good resources. Um, I'm going to, I'm having trouble getting over my other tab here. Let me uh, move this down. Excuse the OER Commons. Um, once again, Esperanza talked about this, so I won't spend too long on it. A lot of good resources in here. I found maybe a little bit less for the CTE programs that I teach for the math and science. I think there's a lot in here. One of the things I really like about OER Commons is all the resources. You can rate them and you can give feedback on them. So when you're looking at a resource, if it has five stars, you kind of realize, oh, somebody really liked this. It makes it easier to filter through and find good quality resources. Um, there's that. And then let me slow down a little bit. Are we doing on time? Cool. Um, once again, Esperanza talked about Wisconsin and Eat Online. It sounds like a lot of people are familiar with it, so I'm not going to um, spend too much time on here. I've pulled a lot of these simulations out, and I think they're absolutely wonderful. I've used them in my inspection class. I've used them in my material science class. I really like this resource right here. Um, and then here's one that I use a lot, which I'm going to use as maybe a, a little bit of an example. Um, one of the services that um, OER Commons do, you, um, provides and Skills Commons provides is really they, they take the resource and they, they cement it in place. Like if it's in Skills Commons, you can download it, it's yours. So you feel really comfortable building your class on those resources. This is a wonderful resource for that I've used for my material science class. It's hosted on this website. Um, I can't really download the page. I've, I've done screenshots and I've copied and pasted into documents and everything, but they recently reorganized their whole site. And I had a bunch of links from my course material into the site and it's on that, it's fine for them, it's their site. They can reorganize it with you want. But then all of a sudden in the middle of my course, I realized, oh, wait a second, they move stuff around. I need to go and find all these resources again on the new site. So that was a bit of a trip trip up. But this is a wonderful site for Iowa State University if, um, for material sciences. It gets into basic chemistry and like I've used this site a lot. So let's go back to my um, presentation here. Now, here's where I might get into a little bit of trouble with the OER purists. Um, so I use a lot of materials that are free, but not open. And when I used to do software development, we used to say there's free as in speech and there's free as in beer. Um, free as in beer is good. You don't have to pay for it, but free speech is better because you have control over it. You can do with it what you want. So um, all of the resources we've been talking about previously, I would call free speech resources. You have total control over it. 
But in my classes, I use free materials like stuff provided by companies. Um, Sandra Cormorant has a wonderful materials online about cutting tools and the like. Um, and I also use enthusiast created videos. People, here's two examples that are on YouTube. Um, one of the things I really like about the enthusiast created videos is students relate to them. Um, they provide another perspective. And it, all of this gives me a chance to talk about digital literacy because younger students these days are going to the internet to doing random searches to find information. They're finding things on YouTube. So I try and teach them some skills of looking critically at the resources um, so that they can find that. But this has the same problem that I talked about with the NDE site is you're building your course on sand if you're using these materials because you have no control. This could disappear tomorrow because you don't have control over it. Um, the other problem I hate about the enthusiast videos is I have a YouTube premium account. So I never see advertisements but my students don't. And I hate it if they click on, an, on a link that I've provided with a good resource and they have to sit through a minute and a half of ads before they get to the instructional content, which is really a showstopper. Um, we, use, we used to use a streaming service called Kaltura on our campus that allowed you to embed YouTube videos and they could watch them without seeing advertisements. And CK12 and LibreText also have tools for that. Um, so there's ways around it, but it's frustrating um, making your students watch advertisements. Um, let me check the time here. How are we doing? Okay. Um, so coming back to this statement that I opened up with, um, where the and I want to highlight the sharing teaching tools and strategies. I think it's so huge when uh, teachers can co collaborate on the curriculum development and the curating and the content designer. So you don't have to do all of it yourself um, to create the materials. It save a lot of time if you can collaborate. All of these resources we've been looking at are wonderful tools. There's a lot of information, but it can take a lot of time to dig through them and find the information you need um, if that's not your full-time job. Um, so this year at LBCC, I got a fellowship. Um, and uh, if you're not familiar with, I don't know if, I don't think all schools do fellowships, but I got work release. Um, I taught one class less than I typically do. Um, and I got to devote that time to the project of my choice. And I've been working on this um, project called the uh, CTE Online Learning Research Project. Um, and what it is, is it's a and it's in process, but it's a curated database of online learning resources. Um, and I'll show you it in just a second, but things are indexed and cross-linked to make it easier to navigate through and easier to find things, easier to share resources. Um, you can comment on the resources, rate them and stuff like that. It's built on WordPress, which is an open source um, uh, content management system. It's one of the most popular used. It's, some people say 50% of the websites in the world are powered by WordPress. Um, so it's open source, it's easy to use, the, and what I've developed is also open source. So coming back over to here, and let's look at this. This is, this is the demo of the CTE Online Learning Resource Project. And it starts out with just a table of resources that people have added and uploaded. And it's quickly searchable. So if I want, if I'm looking for something about a micrometer, something like that, I can see whatever resources we have that are based, that are about reading micrometer. We can see who created it, get a good summary, and everything is tagged and you can add tags and the like. So I might, for example, click on this resource, reading an inch micrometer, um, and I get summary, a nice image of it, and I can look here. And let me start, pause for a moment and say, I'm not a web designer. You are looking at the visually at the peak of my designing power, which is not good. So it obviously needs some cleanup and work, but functionally, this is uh, what I'm going for. So we can look here, and if you wanted to, we could look at, oh, it's from the Wisconsin Online Collection. That's great. What else is in the Wisconsin Online Collection? So I can click on that, and I get the Wisconsin Online Collection, and I can see everything that's in the database from there. 
And all of these links are clickable. So I can say, oh, what else did, for example, Sue Silverstein create? Oh, well, that's the only one from her, but maybe somebody else in the collection or maybe what's an inspection here? So I can click on this and what all is tagged with inspection. And I can say, oh, well, there's another one about reading an inch micrometer by Adam Booth. Um, and you can see, oh, this has been rated. It's got four stars. Um, and somebody made a comment on it. Great close-ups, Adam walks a different micrometer reading. So I can get a quick, oh, hey, this is a useful resource. Maybe I wanna investigate this more. What else has Adam created? Oh, there's a lot of stuff that people have uploaded by Adam Booth. And now I can go through this. So it's, a, it's a really an interactive way to find resources quickly um, without the cumbersome search engines that a lot of sites use. Um, and I want it as far as maintaining something like this, because that's the fear. How do you maintain this? Is it a lot of work to make this happen? Um, and so this is one of the nice things about building it on WordPress and because it's truly built into WordPress. Let's, let's look for something else. So let's go back to the top and um, Let's see what all we have about Haas. And so here's something. So these are all the people have uploaded that are um, Haas CNC machines. And I noticed this creator, somebody that's not a good creator, right? So let's click on this um, and let's edit this resource. And this is the cool thing about having it built on WordPress is it's made to be edited like this is I can come through, here's my tags. And here's my creators. So all I have to do is delete the, the junk creators that shouldn't be in there. And if I wanted to, well, we could come up here and say, ah, we don't like this tag. And it shows you the most used tags and we wanna add CNC. So we're gonna add CNC to our tags. Um, we want to say that it's ad supported, belongs to machine tool and mechatronics probably. I won't go through now, but it's really easy to set a cover image, et cetera. And then I can update this resource and view the resource. And it's been fixed. The creator is now in line with all my other creators, which makes the cross linking work, um, et cetera. And I could come in here and I could rate it like this. So this is the idea of the online resource project is making it easy in a sort of a crowdsourced way, an interactive way to share what you find useful. So it would not replace LibreText or OER Commons or Skills Commons, but allow for sort of like a side channel of finding the resources in there in an easier and faster way. Um, so this plugin that does the, uh, the rating, it's a plugin to, to to WordPress, I just installed it. It took me maybe an hour to add this functionality to it. There are thousands of plugins for WordPress. So this can be customized. Things I'd like to see happen with this in the future are A, make it look better. Um, and let me, and I'd like to see that resources be able to be sorted and filtered based on resources. So you could do a search on micrometers um, and then filter it or sort it based on what was the most rated or who commented on what. I'd like to see um, a shared creation and moderation. What I would like to see is if this went live, um, you would have content create or you'd, you would have specialists from different fields who would sort of manage different parts of it so that there was good creation and moderation. And then I'd like people to be able to create playlists or resources. If I'm using a bunch of resources for a class, create a list and share it or not share it. It could be private or public so that then if I'm looking for something for my inspection class, I can find a list that somebody else put together and said, hey, this is a bunch of really good links on this topic. And you could then share it and use that, that playlist to add to your classes. Um, and then last thing, it'd be nice as an instructor to be able to create, have a sort of a private control panel where I could do all my own stuff, upload my resources, but not share them publicly until I've, I've sort of curated them myself. And that would add to the quality of the overall links in the, um, in the list. So 
that is, I think, um, what I had. So that's just a little bit about WordPress. Um, that's my 10 minute elevator talk on the online resource project and the resources that I've used um, in uh, teaching since I've been doing it for the last four years. Thank you. Eric, thank you so much. And you too, Esperanza, and you all timed this perfectly. We've got 10 minutes for questions and we've already got one here in the chat. But I would like to say that I have learned a new word today. I've never heard of mechatronics before. I'm, I can't say I'm sure what that is, but I'm gonna look it up after this. So a lot of what you were speaking is Latin to me or Greek to me, whatever you wanna say, Tarek. But but what great information. I did put a, um, a link to, to the um, OLRC in the chat already, Tarek. Although, as I said, we'll be sharing the slides and uh, the recording uh, with all of the registrants after the webinar. And um, Heather Walker, our Digitex's amazing program coordinator, has just put a link to our evaluation survey. So please do take a moment to pull that up and fill it out whenever you have um, just a moment. We would really appreciate it. But um, we've had some you know, great, great feedback here in the chat um, with compliments to Esperanza's great information and um, how empowering and impactful open education open education pedagogy can be, as well as open education practice, um, and appreciations for the resources, how essential simulations are to CTE. I'm so glad that, that you all brought that up because that is very important. Um, others confirming and validating the confusion about skills common search results and that that can be an issue with a number of the sites. Uh, and I do want to come though here to this question that Marcy had. Um, she says, excellent, Tarek, a database of curated topical content is a fantastic resource. And Samantha Johnson, she's a cataloger for 10 years. Nice compliment to you, Tarek, because she said you created your own library catalog, <laughs> which I think was really nice. <laughs> but then we've got Marcy asking, um, is the OLRP only for certain subject areas or all CTE subject areas? So um, that's kind of up in the air. Um, like I said, I've developed it um, for all CTE subject areas and it's, it's open source. It has a GitHub page. Somebody could download it and decide they wanted to use it for English or they could use it for whatever. It's a hundred percent free and open source. Um, my, I'm trying to get um, a better hosting site for it right now. It's on my personal site and I pay for, for bandwidth on that site. So for example, the public site isn't serving out images right now because I'm just trying to, I'm pinching pennies, um, but I'm trying to find a, a location to, to publicly host it so that it can go live. And then my plan is to have it do all CTE subject areas, but maybe organized a little bit better. But if somebody wanted to download it and do it for something else, they totally could. Tarek, that's great to know, and it certainly is in the absolute spirit of open and community and, and you know, communities engaging together to not only create but improve resources like this. You showed your, um, your kind of list of what the future plans are. Uh, besides just providing reviews uh, where you put that plug in there, are there other ways that others might be able to collaborate with you on this for its sustainability? And do you have plans for future funding? <laughs> um, not at the moment. Um, and as far as it's an open source project. So if somebody is um, a designer and wants to help make it look better, if somebody's interested in learning WordPress development, what if you're not familiar with GitHub, what it is, is it's an open source. It's, it's basically a resource library where somebody can go and download the code, make changes and upload it. And there's bug tracking and feature tracking and stuff like that. So open source projects work great when you have multiple people collaborating on making it happen. So if somebody wants to contribute and help out with the um, program, with the OER on, with the, the tool I've developed, all they have to do is go to the GitHub site, download it, um, and they can contact me and ask questions. But yes, I would love help both collaborating on what it should become because I think that's open and how it can do its job better. And we can work together to make a resource. Um, is what I really like to see happening. Thank you, Tarek. I appreciate it. At Rudy. Hi, Rudy. How you doing? <laughs> Thank you for the question here. Is there an OER group or community of learners practice through Digitex? No, but what a wonderful idea. Would you like to help us get that going, Rudy? <laughs> uh, 
I yes was the short answer. I don't know how um, useful I could be. What we're, we're in the process of looking into this for for the district, I think. Um, so whatever I'm doing is at the beginning stages. We've talked about it here and there throughout the four years that I've been here, but you guys are much more knowledgeable and this is a perfect uh, opportunity, I think, for to bring like-minded people together across, um, I guess, the region. This is the regional um, group. Yeah, yeah. Would you yeah. statewide group, yes. Oh, statewide, okay. Yeah, I don't know what I could do, but or how we could form this, but I'm up to, to, um, to assisting and supporting, very much so. It's a great idea. I, and, and Ursula put yes, or Ursula is our associate director of Digitex, Ursula Pike, and she put yes with three exclamation points. I don't know if that was in response to Rudy, but if it was Ursula, we're gonna be tapping into your expertise for this good. She just has given a thumbs up. Great. She's like, well, what am I gonna say now? My supervisor just said, I'm gonna do this. It's a great idea. You know, I will say, I'll put in a plug for the coordinating board, the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, for those who are not in Texas, is our state higher ed agency. And under the leadership of Dr. Michelle Singh and their relatively new division of digital learning, they are just going gangbusters with a variety of open education initiatives. And through OER Texas, the statewide repository that they, with ISKME and OER Commons, have stood up, they do have a number of communities in that. They've got hubs, I think they have, I don't know if they call it a community of practice, but they do have a community within that. So that is something that we could, we could work in conjunction with um, in addition to I'm, I'm not quite sure how but Rudy I'm gonna follow Ursula and I will follow up with you on that because I think it's a great idea and and then we can tap into other existing networks and communities of practice like CCC OER which I had mentioned in the chat and provided a, a link to that for those um, who are at community colleges and would like to tap into an amazing national network um, and, and their parent organization is Open Education Global. Oh, Marianne, you're, yeah, I, I, I saw that you're, thank you, Marianne, I saw that you were here in the webinar and Marianne is in that division at the coordinating board and she has provided the link to OER Texas there. So they're, they're just really doing some amazing work, I think, to bring communities together. We co-organize with the coordinating board in the Texas Digital Library, our Open Texas annual conference. The call for papers for that should be coming out at any time. It will be held in September and and uh, you know, any, anyone in or outside of Texas will be able to attend that conference. So that's also a great uh, mechanism for networking and creating communities, but perhaps something more formal that we could do and then we might be able to, to uh, work to develop or announce at that conference might be useful. Uh, oh, good, Liz. Thank you for putting some information in on CCC OER, and I really appreciate that. So I got on a little side note there, but Rudy, I appreciate the fantastic idea. idea. Um, and Amy Gates, a wonderful idea of establishing a regional group. Thank you, Amy. And we've just got about three minutes left. So uh, Andy has put in um, a community college in Northern California, and we have a community of practice through our state academic senate. Ah, perhaps you could use their website to get some ideas. Oh, and thank you so much, Andy. I, I actually have heard of this, but I, I, I need sometimes those direct connections to connect uh, something existing to a new idea. So I appreciate that. And it looks like Rudy's taken note as well, because Rudy's over there in San Antonio going, wow, I'm so glad I, <laughs> I spoke up. <laughs> Thanks for doing all the legwork. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ursula, thanks for putting in information about the Open Texas Conference. And like I said, we do anticipate that call for proposals going out early next week for that conference, which is scheduled for September 21st through 23rd. Did Esperanza say nursing and allied health programs available using OER? Esperanza? Yes, I actually did, and I've actually developed content to support uh, the, our nursing and allied health programs. <laughs> I see that Suzanne has put in um, the, the, the term or the name title open in RN, which is a uh, federally funded from the Department of Education, as I understand it, uh, program to develop open educational resources for nursing through the Wisconsin Community and Technical Colleges. They have done amazing work um, in Wisconsin for developing nursing 
OER and simulations as well. And, and they're, they're still working on that. And it's really providing something that I think the rest of us in other states and regions and internationally can build on. Suzanne said they should be completed by fall of 2022. Do you have a link that you could maybe drop? I think we just got about one minute left, but Suzanne, or you can always Google, I think, OpenRN and find that. Kathleen asked, how does that align with state nursing requirements? I think because we're just about out of time, we're not going to have time to address that today but perhaps there could be some following up afterwards among um, those who are showing interest in that in the chat. Oh, thank you so much for providing links there. Thank you, Liz. Suzanne did as well. So please do follow up with each other. I love when webinars can, can create those connections. Well, we're out of time. Thanks to all of you for joining us. But most of all, thank you so much to Esperanza and to Tarek for the fantastic, very pragmatic information. Thank you for the applause, Rudy. I appreciate it for your great idea. And I, I just hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the day and rest of the semester. And thank you again. Take good, take good care. Courtney, thanks to you for providing our live closed captioning. I don't know if she's still here, but. <laughs> thanks, Judith. This was awesome. Eric, thank you. It was amazing. Appreciate it.